almost all vehicles in Foxhole are built in a garage. To find a garage, you press M to open your map, and in the map legend, you just untick everything except structures. And then we can see that the truck icon, which is the garage, is fairly easy to find. To build a vehicle, we walk up to the garage until it says in the bottom left, press E to use garage. We press E to open the garage. And now we can see in the right in the production panel that the vehicles that are available to build are in white and the vehicles that haven't been tagged yet are grayed out. If we hover over the icon of a vehicle, whether it is available or not, doesn't matter. It will give us a brief description and in the bottom of the info panel it will give us the price in materials. For instance, this Gallagher Highwayman will cost us 170 refined materials. Right now I just want to build the Don Transport, the normal truck and we can see that it will cost us 100 basic materials. Make sure you have the materials for the vehicle in your backpack. Click on the icon of the vehicle you want that will put a blueprint inside the garage. You equip your hammer by pressing one, walk up to the blueprint and start hammering in the basic materials. Once you hammered in the last beam mat, the vehicle you chose will turn from a blueprint into the actual vehicle indicating that it's ready. Once it's ready you walk up to the driver's seat in the front left and you press Q to hop in. Then you use the WASD keys to drive your vehicle out of the garage. Each vehicle that you just built or just took out of storage comes with 10% fuel in the tank. To refuel your vehicle, there are two ways. The first way is to do it by hand. In order to do that, we make sure that we are outside the truck. And if we look in our inventory, we can see that in my backpack is a jerry can full of diesel. Make sure it is in your equipment. It goes into your third slot, which means that if we tab out our inventory, screen and we press 3 we will equip the jerry can. You then aim at your truck and hold down the left mouse button and you can see that we are refueling the truck. If you let go of the left mouse button you will stop refueling. Another way of refueling your vehicle is to use a fuel truck. There is a fuel truck across the street. To refuel it with the fuel truck, we drive our own vehicle close to the fuel truck. We press a Q to hop out of our truck and then we press E to open the inventory of our own truck. And in the actions panel, we can click on the refuel diesel button and this will throw a hose between the fuel truck and our own truck and it will start refueling. There are two different types of fuel in Foxhole. There is the most common one, which is diesel, which is made out of scrap. And there is petrol, which is made out of crude oil. Petrol will make your vehicle go significantly faster, up to 10%. Whereas diesel is way more common and way more available. To switch the fuel type your vehicle is using, make sure that you are close to the vehicle till it says in the bottom right E for inv inventory. We press E to open the inventory and in the actions panel, we can see there is a button that says change fuel. This will change out the fuel type. It will ask you, are you sure? And if you are sure, it will pull out the diesel that was already in. So now if we equip the petrol into our equipment, press 3 to have it in our hand, aim at our truck and hold down the left mouse button, we are refueling our truck with petrol now. Now to change back to diesel, it works the same way. We press E to open the inventory, we click the change fuel button and we get our petrol back. And then if we make sure that we equip the diesel, we can refuel our truck with diesel and drive off. Most vehicles in Foxhole have different seats. Now in order to traverse those seats, there are different ways. The first way is to press shift plus Q to get a drop down list of all the available seats. And then just click on the seat you want to sit in. 
The second way of traversing the seats is if you're in one of the seats is pressing the Z key. This will cycle you through the different seats. So you can see every time we press Z, it will say switching seats and there will be an icon indicating that we are actually switching seats. Eventually you will end up in the driver's seat as indicated by the vehicle icon in the top left. The third way of switching seats is by using the key combination control plus a number. If you hit control plus a one, it will always bring you to the driver's seat. Control two will bring you to the first passenger seat. Or if you're in an armored vehicle, it will bring you to your, the commander seats or one of the gunner seats. Control three will bring you to the third seat, control four to the fifth and so on. If you hit control one again, we're back to where we started, which is the driver's seat. To avoid that people can easily take your vehicle, make sure you lock it. To lock a vehicle, you can simply stand next to it and press L. In the top right of your screen, you will see a lock icon and to unlock it, you press L again. Another way of doing it is to press E when you're close to it and then using the lock button to lock your vehicle and the unlock button to unlock it. Be aware though that locked vehicles can be opened with a wrench. So if you equip a wrench, it goes into your first slot. You press one to equip it and you crouch near the vehicle and aim at it. You hold down the left mouse button. It will start dismantling the lock. Once it is done dismantling the lock, we can see that the lock icon disappeared and now if we press Q we can hop on the motorbike and drive off. Damaged vehicles can easily be repaired with basic materials. Make sure you have basic materials in your backpack. Make sure you have your hammer out. Walk up to the damaged vehicle and hold down the left mouse button and this will start repairing the vehicle. When vehicles are damaged below a certain threshold, they will be disabled. We can see that by the smoke coming out of it. You are not able to drive a disabled vehicle. We hope in, and we try to drive, it will tell you damaged needs repairs. So to repair it, make sure you have basic materials on you. Walk up to the vehicle and hold down the left mouse button. Once you get the vehicle above the damage threshold at which it disables, you are able to drive it away to a safe spot and finish the repairs there. Vehicles inside a snowstorm will freeze and once they are frozen, you can't move them around as is shown by this truck. If we try to move it, it says vehicle is frozen. To defrost the vehicles, we need to build a fire pit. So if we equip our hammer by pressing one, pressing B to go into the build menu and we look what we need for a fire pit. That is 35 basic materials and we need some diesel. So we'll get 35 basic materials, some diesel, we equip the hammer. We walk up between both of these vehicles. We click the fire pit, place it down and start hammering the fire pit. And once it's ready, equip the diesel in our third slot. Make sure we press three. And if we pour it onto the fire, we can see that the fire is picking up. And over time, that should heat up our vehicles, which should make them uh, not frozen anymore. And we can start to drive them away if we so wish. Besides a normal overall health pool, certain armored vehicles have individual subsystems that can also be damaged. There are the turret subsystem, the fuel subsystem, and the track subsystem. And beside those subsystems, there is also a hidden armor value that determines whether or not a shot can be deflected. 
when the turret subsystem is damaged, we can see that there is smoke coming out of the turret. If we hop into the tank, we can see in the top left that we have the icon that says that the turret subsystem is damaged. It looks like a broken turret. And if we hop into the gunner seat and we try to rotate the turret, we can see that the turret is stuck in the position in which it got damaged. When the fuel subsystem gets damaged, we can see that there is oil spouting out of the back of our tank. If we hop into the tank in the top left, we can see the icon that indicates that the fuel subsystem is damaged. It looks like the valve. And we can also see that the fuel all of our tank is draining at an alarming rate. When the track subsystem gets damaged, we can see that if we're driving the tank, that the tracks are all wobbly and that we're moving at a very slow pace. And in the top left of our screen, we can see the icon that indicates that our track subsystem has been damaged. It looks like a track. No matter which subsystem got damaged, we need basic materials in our backpack, pull out our hammer and walk up to our armored vehicle and start hammering in basic materials. We have to repair the armored vehicle to 100% to fix the subsystem. To fully repair an armored vehicle, we need to bring it to a garage. We drive the vehicle into the garage, we hop out and press E to open the menu of the garage. If we look in the actions panel, we can see there is a button that says full repair. This will fully repair our armored vehicle, including the subsystems, the normal health pool, and most importantly, the armor rating. We need to make sure there is a hundred basic materials in the inventory of the garage. And if we now click the full repair button, our armored vehicle is as good as new. On a side note, if you manage to steal an enemy's armored vehicle, you are not able to fully repair it in a garage. Most vehicles come with a horn. To sound the horn, press the left mouse button. A very select number of vehicles has a boost function. To use the boost function, Press the shift key while driving. This will speed up the vehicle for a short period of time. This, however, will consume more fuel. The only two vehicles that are not built in the garage are the construction vehicle and the crane. They can only be built near a home spawn that is a town base, a relic base, a border base or a deployed landing ship. To build it, make sure you have your hammer out by pressing 1. Then go into the build menu by pressing B and in the build menu select either the construction vehicle or the crane. If we hover over it we can see the cost in materials. Let's go for the construction vehicle. If we click it we get a blueprint under our mouse cursor so we get to decide where we place it. If we hold down the right mouse button we can change the orientation in which it will start. We're happy with the place where we want to build. We left click that will place the blueprint and then we walk up to the blueprint just as in the garage and start hammering in basic materials. To make a crane, the procedure is basically the same as with the construction vehicle. Make sure you have the necessary materials in your backpack. For the crane, that is 125 basic materials. Make sure you have your hammer equipped. Press B to open the build menu, select the crane. And if we walk down, we can see if we are too far away from the base, we can't start building the crane. So if we move back towards the base and we place the blueprint, walk up to it and start hammering in basic materials. The crane has two modes. The first mode is just driving around. When we have the crane where we want it to lift the container, we press F to deploy the crane. This will put the crane in place, but will make it able for us to lift containers. If we hold down the right mouse button, we can aim our crane. If we are close to the connection point of something that can be lifted, we get the gear icon with an arrow. And if we are 
where we can actually attach to the object, we get the two overlapping gears. So all we need to do to lift up this object now is to left click and that will pick up the container. If we want to move the container within the reach of the crane, we can just do that by holding down the right mouse button. We can see that the icon changed underneath our mouse cursor. If it is red, it means that we can't drop the container there. If we try, it says unable to drop. And if we are somewhere where it is possible, we can left click and that will start dropping the container. If we want to move with crane and container at the same time, we have to undeploy the crane. So we press F, that will bring back the crane to the starting orientation. Once we are fully undeployed, we can move with our crane. We can use the A and D key to rotate the object that is on the crane hook to make stacking and putting things in neat rows easier. To operate a construction vehicle, you need to be in it. And once you're in it, you can drive around with the WASD keys. And if you hold down the right mouse button, you can aim the building arm at something and that way turn the whole cabin. If you want to upgrade something just like with the hammer, you can press F to go into upgrade mode. And if we now aim at this bunker base piece, we can press E to go into the upgrade menu. And if we select the bunker base, we get to blueprint. We make sure that we're aimed at it and hold down the left mouse button and that will start building the bunker base upgrade. And to build things with the construction vehicle, we don't need to be in the upgrade mode, but in normal build mode, then press B and we can see that we have the options to make an encampment and the gate. If you want to place the gate, you click on the gate icon. You then get the blueprint of the gate under your mouse cursor. It will be yellow. If you hold down your right mouse button, you can change the orientation of the object. If you're happy with the placement of the gate, you can left click and that will put down the gate. If you now drive up to it and hold down the left mouse button, you will start building the gate, which we won't be doing because that will be blocking the road right now. To, oh, to, 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 to